Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at how to share your external hard drives on your network. If you have a router, any type of router that has a USB port, then this video is for you. A lot of people have asked to see this video on how to share data across the network on a simple and affordable way. Well, all you need to do here is we've got one USB port and I want to extend those USB ports uh, using a USB hub. What this will do is obviously give us more USB ports to plug more devices into those USB ports. Now, remember, you have to have powered units to be able to run this successfully. Uh, so you really want to get the uh, USB hub with its own power source. This is probably going to be the best way forward. This one doesn't have its own power source, but they do actually sell one with a power source. I wanted to try it without a power adapter to see whether it would be possible to share data plugging in different drives into this actual device. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now, it doesn't really matter what um, router you've got or router uh, you have, as long as you've got a USB port on there, which you can populate with your device. So let's go ahead and what we'll do is get this set up and I'll show you what we're going to do next. So I've got the Sabrent uh, USB hub out of its packaging here, and this is what it looks like. There is no power source to this. So we're powering basically four devices on here through one USB port. Now, as long as we don't exceed the power limit of that USB port, we should be fine. And this means that you're not going to be able to use mechanical drives, large mechanical drives without any power adapters with them. Otherwise, it's going to draw too much power from this USB port. But we'll give it a test and I'll show you exactly what you can do and what you can't do with this. So I'm going to populate this USB port here and this will give us an extra four USB ports. Now, this is a cheap and affordable way to be able to share media over your local network, and it's going to be really easy to set up. And once you've got this done, you'll be able to share files with different computers on the network. So let's go ahead and I'll get this set up here. Now, it's best to use devices that have low power draw. This way, we're not going to overload the USB port on this router. Remember, we've already extended this to four USB ports instead of one. So we are going to be limited for power, but I'm pretty sure that if we set this up right, we should be able to use a very large external hard drive, i.e. 14 terabytes, uh, with its own power source. And then we can plug in some USB drives and also an SSD. Uh, so let's take a look here. Now, you've got a USB uh, drive here. This has about 128 gigabytes on it. You can definitely use something like this to share data. This is also a SSD. We could use this. This would be no problem at all. It's not going to use a lot of power, and that should work perfectly fine. Uh, you might have trouble with this Western Digital uh, My Passport or something like that because these do require a little bit more power. Now, it is capable of being plugged into a USB port on its own and working, so you may get that working on this hub. But remember, we're trying to plug in four different devices. SSD devices like these will work perfectly fine as well. So you can get a couple of terabytes on these sort of things. This one here is 12 or 14 terabytes, something like that. But it does have its own power source, which means this should work perfectly fine. So if you do have one of these and you want to plug it into one of these USB ports, you can do, and it will work perfectly fine because it has its own power adapter which is going to give it power which means it's not using the power off of the usb hub now i've got three devices already plugged in i'm just going to plug in the large uh, external hard drive here with its own power source and that should be it we should be able to get this working and we should be able to watch different media on different sources and it should work perfectly fine so let's go ahead and power this on and we'll give it a test to see how it works. So basically what this is going to be doing is it's going to act like a NAS really because we've plugged in the USB drive into uh, the router and it will be visible on the local network and we'll be able to access files across that local network with all of our devices. So it's turned off at the moment and there's separate power buttons for these so you don't have to have them on all the time. All you do have to remember is when you power these on, it's going to take a bit of time for these to establish on, on this router network. And what we're going to do is we'll be able to access them once it stabilizes. But we will need to go into the router settings to set this up. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to head over to 
the computer now and log in to the router menu. So you can type um, ipconfig space forward slash all to get your router IP address. You should really know what this is, but um, this one is mine. You're looking for the default gateway here, and I'm going to log into my router, which I've just done, and I've gone to advanced and gone to the USB section. You can see it's found that USB device. It is actually an SSD, but it has a USB adapter on the end of it, and it's now working. I've got this sharing on the network. You've got access mode here, and you can see the name is called TP-Share. You can change that to whatever you like. And we're going to leave these uh, check marked here. This is for your local FTP. And also we've got the Samba for Windows as well. So you can just log straight in now and take a look at these files. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And if you want to get this uh, outside of your network, you might need to do some other fettling with these settings, but that's for another video. Now, right here, the secure sharing is now turned on and you can see the secured sharing is going to be using the admin and the visit uh, type of account. These have their own uh, username and password. I'm not going to show you these, but there is a little eye with a line for it. And if I showed you these, it will give you the password. Now, this is to access the uh, USB device on your network. These are set to read for the visit. And also we're going to be setting this to read and write for the administrator. And we also got media sharing down on the bottom uh, toggled on as well. And uh, we need to make sure that all that is done. So that should now all work theoretically. So let's go ahead and access these files to see whether we can actually see these files on the local network. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up. But before I do that, I just want to quickly populate the rest of these by turning these on. I only had one on and you can see that was visible. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to power on all of these now to see whether they suddenly become visible on the router. So let's go back. I've turned all of these on. I'll quickly turn the light out here so you can see the LED lights are now all blue. And you can already see that these devices are working perfectly fine. So head back over to the router settings and we'll quickly refresh these settings right here. And there we go. Once we refresh them, they should start to populate. Now, one of them hasn't populated just yet. So I'll quickly swap that device out. It might not like that device and or one of the cables might be faulty on it. I knew one of these was a little bit faulty when I plugged it in. So I'm going to plug in another device and you can now see that Western Digital uh, Elements is now visible. And we also have the Western Digital My Passport visible. I've got all those plugged in and everything is working fine. So let's go ahead now and uh, I'm going to try and test these out a little bit and then we can uh, access this data. Now we can change this name here if you wanted to call it whatever you like. I'm going to leave this as just tp-share, but you can call it what you like. And these are your login uh, details right here. So the first thing I want to do is head over to the network settings here and I'm going to right click on the media player and we're going to go down to where it says tp-share. So you can see our tp-share is now visible on the network and I can go in here and take a look at photographs or any other data that you have stored on your devices. So let's go ahead and we can play one of these and I'll quickly play one of these so you can see how this works and to see whether we can actually get this to play on the network. Now you should be able to play different files from different types of media source uh, on this actual router. So if you've got two different files from two different uh, devices, you can play those simultaneously and they should work perfectly fine. And there you go, I'm now playing this file and you can see it's working perfectly fine. There's no problem at all playing this across the network and you can do this quite simply yourself. So if that's what you want to do and set up your device, that's how you can do it. So let me go ahead and go back in here again and you will see all of your media here. You can see all video files, all genre, all other stuff that you can have stored in, inside here. I'll just play one more file here so you can see how it plays here and we're getting this play no problem at all. Very simple and easy to set up. So again, if I went into different sources, uh, different devices that I had, I could play files from there no problem at all using the uh, media player. So let me go ahead and log in here. And what we're going to do is log in through the FTP forward slash forward slash and put in our IP for our router and our share. And you can see here, it's asking me to put in some 
username and password. This, of course, is inside your router, as I've already mentioned. So if you take a look here, this is the actual addresses that we've used to type in. And if we go back to here and put in our admin and our password here, we'll be able to use read and write access for these files. So let me quickly go ahead and uh, paste those in. Once we got those in, we can uh, log on and you should now see the four different folders here that we have plugged into that USB hub. These are our four different types of devices we got plugged in. And again, all you need to do here is go into here and you can share files across here. And this is what we call your network attached storage. So we've now got storage on our network, which we can share across our network with all of our devices. Let me go in here and I'll quickly uh, play this for you. Also inside here, you can see that in this PC, there is now a TP-share area. We can go inside here and take a look at these areas here, which we've already looked at. So I'm going to go in here and you can see our four devices. These are all our four devices that we have plugged into that USB hub. So if I go into one of these and we can now uh, play something on our device and you can see it's playing perfectly fine. And you can play this simultaneously on different devices across your network. So if you've got two different computers and, and two of them want to stream two different uh, things, you can do. It's pretty straightforward. Or you can have one opening up documents and one uh, playing some other file. You can do. So here we have right here, we have our Sabrent powered USB hub. And this is 13 watts. As you can see here, it does come with its own power adapter. So this is probably what you want to go for. This is what I was using right here, which doesn't have its own power source, but there is one with a powered source on it, which I didn't actually realize until I looked after the fact. But you can see here, this would have been the better one to go for because it does have its own power source. And you can see, you can just plug in whatever devices you want here and you can power them on and off. Now you may find that the My MyPiceBall might have a bit of trouble running on a non-powered device like this. So bear in mind that you probably will need uh, to have one with its own power source like this big uh, 14 terabyte, which is accessible on our local network. So it just goes to show you can do it. You don't have to spend an absolute fortune on network attached storage devices like NASs uh, from uh, Synology and uh, QNAP and things like that, which do cost a lot of money. You can use something as simple as this to get you up and running. Let me know in the comments section below whether you've got something like this set up in your local network. I'll be interested to read your comments and whether you want to see more of this sort of content, I'll be happy to make this content for you if you want to watch it. If not, then I won't make it anymore. Other than that, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching and have a lovely day. Bye for now.